times that because of all of this continuous data collection, this feedback loop of continuous data collection that's going on, Google already knows most people better than their significant others know them, or even better than they know themselves. When Infotech merges with biotech, what you get is the ability to create algorithms that understand me better than I understand myself. I think this is maybe the most important thing to know about living right now in the 21st century. Smart speakers like Google Home and the Amazon Echo are everywhere, from the living room to the kitchen. They're the fastest growing electronic device on the market right now. It's to a point now where experts are saying that Alexa and Facebook are not only going to be able to predict the end of a relationship based on what people are posting and the data of what they're doing online, what they're buying and sharing and everything, but eventually they're now saying this prediction will now be able to be made before the relationship itself even starts, which is yet another science fiction film plot that's just coming to life right now. I mean, I don't know, can you imagine this? Talk about the romance being dead, jeez. I mean, now they're gonna have sophisticated algorithms that'll just be able to whittle down an entire relationship to a percentage point likelihood of whether or not it's going to last or not, so why even bother in the first place? But that's just based on algorithms because they're also saying that once we're surrounded by these all listening, all hearing, artificially intelligent voice assistants like the Amazon Alexa and the Google Home, etc. They will be able to predict whether a marriage will be successful at a threshold higher than the current level of 75% accuracy based on continuous acoustical analysis of the verbal communication going on in the home between the couple. So it's going to take into account vocal patterns, and word variations and intonation and the frequency of communication. It's gonna take all these factors in. It's gonna be listening to everything between a couple. So now you're mediating your relationship with this device that's going to be reading into everything that you communicate with one another and then analyzing that continuously to let you know. And apparently eHarmony, who is part of this study, their subscribers already review their matches and communicate with users through Alexa as it is. So they're already being trained to mediate relationships, new relationships that they have with the Alexa device. In the future though, this technology is going to evolve to tell you whether or not you're a good match and to tell you whether or not your relationship is gonna break up or not. And at the very least, at the end, it talks about how, well, at least the digital assistants can help you in other ways, such as reminding you uh, what to get for your wife's birthday, what kind of stuff she likes, and uh, reminding you when special events are and things like that. And if, if, if it reads into your wife's information and finds out she's had a bad day, it's going to let you know how to communicate with her. So either way, it's still invasive in my opinion because now the couple's not a couple anymore. Now it's a threesome with an artificially intelligent digital assistant. Oh honey, how'd you know that I liked daisies? Well, the computer told him that you did. How romantic. But if you take that out to its logical conclusion, I guess the computer can teach each person in a relationship how to psychologically manipulate the other person in the relationship so that they'll be happy with you. That's also really messed up. I think we're getting ready to live in a world that's incredibly programmed while we program ourselves and program our relationships. But if the technology can do that, then just think about what else it can do. One of the first questions I had when I began looking into it deeper is how long will it be until these smart assistants become so ingrained in people's lives that they begin to actually nudge people in certain directions or into making certain lifestyle changes or things that the computer now thinks are better for you than you think for yourself. So it starts to kind of nudge you to make the decisions that it thinks you should make in your life. Not only that, but it's also being predicted that these smart assistants will eventually be used for actual relationship counseling. So now you have to imagine a world where Alexa or the Google Home bot or whatever, they're now mediating your arguments at home. And of course, sending clips of recordings of those arguments to whatever corporation's cloud servers for further review, because that's where all your data goes. 
I don't know. For me, I, never once have I ever considered putting one of these things in my house. Especially not after we've been told repeatedly over and over that they're basically spy devices. I mean, most people think these smart assistants are only activated when, when they say the activation word, which is what Amazon claims is the case. But two reasons right now I can list why that's ridiculous, and the first of which should just be common sense. First, and this is something that my 10-year-old even said a few weeks ago, it, the only way the thing can kick on when it hears an activation word is if it's listening already for the activation word in the first place. That's how it works. Otherwise, how would it know to kick on when that word is heard? But secondly, it's all just a formality anyway to even argue it. Because Amazon just got done filing for a patent that would enable Alexa to record continuously 24-7 and then use what they actually refer to as voice sniffing, quote unquote, voice sniffing technology to then root out keywords of things that are being said in the ambient conversations that are going on in the house. If you're talking to someone in the house or you're on the phone or whatever, and it will voice sniff these keywords in order to target ads to the people in the house based on the conversations that they're having that were supposed to be private in their own home, which I, again, I just really can't understand why people do not realize if you have one of these things in your house, your life inside of your home, your private life is not private anymore if you put one of these things in your house. It came out in April that Amazon has a global team of workers, not one or two or five or just a few people that sit around. There's a global team of workers thousands of people around the world that are, quote, helping to improve the Alexa digital assistant by listening to the voice recordings that are captured on these devices in people's homes and offices. And they transcribe these recordings, they annotate them. Yeah, there's, th there's thousands of people all over the world. They've signed non-disclosure agreements, so they can't speak publicly about it but they work nine hour shifts a day, listening to as many as a thousand audio clips per shift. So there's that, but also it has come out, the, these devices, they don't just come on when it's the wake word or whatever, that's what people would love to believe. But in practice, people are finding out that that's not actually the case. And you have these devices popping on and randomly recording snippets of what's going on in people's homes all the time when the wake word hasn't been spoken. And that's being reported all over in the media, as in this MIT Technology Review article, literally titled, Yes, Alexa is recording the mundane details of your life, and it's creepy as hell, where she discusses how the thing frequently activates itself, apparently, several times a day in her home, and has recorded snippets of her and her family's otherwise, what she thought, private life, when she never asked it to, and those things are also being sent to Amazon's cloud server. She says it, when she started to play these clips back, the hairs on the back of her neck started to stand up because she says, beyond all the things I've clearly asked Alexa to do in the past several months, it has also tuned in frequently several times a day for no obvious reason. It's heard me complain to my dad about something related at work, chiding my toddler about eating his dinner, talking to my husband, the kinds of normal everyday things you say at home when you think no one else is listening. And that's precisely why it's terrifying. This sort of mundane chit chat is my mundane chit chat. I invited Lexa into our living room to make it easier to listen to Pandora and occasionally check the weather, not to keep a log of intimate family details or record my kids saying, mommy, we go car and forward it to Amazon's cloud storage, which isn't just there and then deleted, they keep it forever. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, you get what I'm saying? So the thing is not just on only for the time when someone wants to check the weather. That's not actually what's going on. But checking the weather, I mean, that is just the beginning of where this technology is headed. And I just, that's the thing that I don't think people understand because they think they just have like this cool, I don't know, science fiction like device and they can say, play my favorite song and whatever, but it's gonna go so, 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 much further beyond that. These devices are the next phase of what the internet is gonna become. Because eventually it's going to be voice. It's not even gonna be typing things into search engines. I mean, that's gonna be looked at as passe and archaic at some point. 
in the not too distant future. But in April, Amazon announced its new officially introduced Alexa healthcare skills, which transmit and receive personal healthcare information from the users. Again, this information is going to a, a private for profit corporation. I don't think people, that line of delineation doesn't seem to be there in people's minds that they are sending all of this information to a corporation that, that is using this data to sell you things. I mean, it's not like they're, it, 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 I don't get how people don't get that either. Hello, Peggy. Tell me about the symptoms or problems that are troubling you the most. It hurts when I urinate and I'm urinating a lot. So now people are giving Amazon Again, a supposedly private company that collects every single piece of data from its users, including every single search, every single purchase, and has taken hundreds of millions of dollars, by the way, in grant money from the CIA. Just by the way, they're giving that company their supposedly private healthcare information. Let's first talk about the urination pain. How much does it hurt? Alexa is now going to be actively triaging people's health issues and giving what the company refers to as personalized medical guidance. Do you have any of these symptoms? You're an unusual color. You're an incontinence. You're in retention. Vaginal discharge. No. And personalized wellness incentives to help people meet their health goals. And it isn't just that the Alexa is now gonna start giving people medical advice, but it was just announced in the middle of while I was trying to put together this video that the United Kingdom's National Health Service has now officially partnered with Amazon. So when users in the UK ask Alexa health-related questions, the Alexa unit is gonna automatically get the information from the official National Health Service website. In other words, people are gonna start getting health advice, health information, answers to health questions, medical advice directly from their government. That's who's gonna be giving people in the UK their medical advice when they ask Alexa questions. This would be the equivalent in the United States of asking Alexa a health-related question and your information coming directly from the CDC. And this is all, again, in its infancy. So we're not even talking about once they integrate this with the Internet of Things and the smart pills that have the sensors inside that are supposed to remind you when to take your medicine or when you haven't taken it. That's all going to be integrated too. I'm sure eventually these smart speakers are going to be reminding people when to take their vaccines and who knows what else. We are in the infancy of this technology. We are just watching it get up off the ground and they're just now starting to roll these things out. You can see where this is headed. Do you think there's gonna be alternative health options being given when you have a smart speaker that only gives you a one-shot answer and now that one-shot answer comes directly from the government? And aside from voice sniffing and medical advice, Amazon was also recently awarded a patent that would enable Alexa to read not only the accents out of people's speech to try and differentiate where a person's from who's talking, but their emotions as well. So they put some articles about this out in the mainstream media and, and those articles mostly seem to focus on the accent reading. They really kind of just sidestepped the completely creepy emotion reading function that these things are starting to do. And we've seen hints of this already. I've, I've seen comments that people have been posting uh, in random chat threads and Reddit and what have you about weird responses they're getting from the smart assistant like this guy who posted that he and his wife were arguing about something and the Alexa unit suddenly popped on and interjected with why don't we change the subject which means not only was Alexa listening but it was able to intelligently understand that an argument was taking place based on the way people were talking that they were upset it was reading their emotions. The important thing is I don't think people understand what happens when everybody gets connected. I believe very strongly that the world will be a much, much safer place. Or this woman who asked Google to set a timer for her dinner, and the thing responded with, You sound upset. How can I help? <laughs> and the thing is, is I'm not the only person whose mind goes into a Twilight Zone episode when they see this stuff, because I posted, I retweeted her tweet about it. I said, why do people believe it's inconsequential or even normal to have this kind of relationship with Google? A gigantic 
multinational tech corporation that makes money off of data. Why are they, why do they think that's okay to have such an intimate relationship like that? And I'm not the only one whose mind works this way. <laughs> this guy comes in, he says, wow, that's textbook gaslighting. Pose an insinuating question about a bad mood or behavior as if it's a fact, and then present yourself as the one with the solution. Weak-minded people will easily start feeling whatever the AI talk bots want them to. Ugh, right? It's, <laughs> it's just, ah. So people are gonna have an artificially intelligent emotion reading continuously recording <laughs> device in their home, <laughs> informing them on how to go about their daily lives on everything from the weather outside to their healthcare to their personal relationships and sending clips of all of those conversations to major tech corporations who make money off of other people's data. I, I don't understand how people don't understand that this is not a good system that is being erected here. These things are meant to become more and more and more integrated into our lives. Entire hotel chains now have made deals with Amazon to put Echo units into hotel rooms as a standard. So when you go to stay there, you'll automatically have an Alexa in your hotel room the same way you would have a television or a telephone now. Amazon Alexa is ready to go on vacation with you. The online shopping giant revealing it will soon put Echo smart speakers in thousands of hotel rooms right next to your bed. Amazon is partnering with Marriott, Weston, Aloft, and St. Regis Hotels, which together have more than 1 million hotel rooms around the world. And a new article just came out in the Wall Street Journal titled, Amazon's plan to move into your next apartment before you do. And I don't subscribe to Wall Street Journal, but I get, the, I get it just from reading the, the byline. They're reporting that Amazon has now made deals to outfit entire brand new apartment complexes with built-in Echo units. So Alexa will be part of the apartment when you move in. So this is gonna be built-in tech now. It's just gonna be part of it. You won't have the choice. It'll probably be in the wall or something. And the byline on the article says, the tech giant has figured out a way to get millions of its smart speakers into homes without consumers lifting a finger as property managers bring in Alexa to manage tenants. To manage tenants. 